has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us this morning, for you could have chosen to be anywhere else, but yet you chose to come and worship with us today. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, where we serve as still speaking God. We are part of the United Church of Christ, which is a denomination that is raising their voice as an alternative vision of what the church can be, where God is seen as loving and inclusive. In a time when many find church narrow and out of touch, we preach a progressive gospel. Here, barriers of ethnicity, class, and sexual orientation are torn down. Here, everyone is welcome. So if you believe in God some of the time, none of the time, or all of the time, you are welcome here to renew your mind and uplift your spirit for whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whatever you're going through in your life, we welcome you to this community. Straight, gay, rich, poor, PhD, and GB or no Ds at all. We welcome you here to experience the love of God in this community where all can seek forgiveness and all can be affirmed. So let us take a deep breath for the rush of the morning might still be clinging to us. Come on, breathe with me. <sighs> Amen. Let us begin worship.
Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk, reading from chapters 1, verses 2 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. If you would like to follow along in your pew Bible, you can find it either on page 871 or 1066. The prophet. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. Chapter 2. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. A word of God for the people of God. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up before. Come and quench this thirsting in my heart. Receive those who are heading toward us. 
May the currently charged political atmosphere no longer hinder, hamper, or keep us away from your active ethic of love. To love one another. To love our neighbor. And not just those in close proximity, but our neighbors of this city, of this country, and this world. Let this time and worship be the open space we need to breathe deeply, reimagine and re-engage your spirit. We trust you, God. We need you, God. We may be hurting, but we're not broken. We may be down, but we haven't died, and we desire a tangible encounter with you on this day. And it is in your son Jesus' name we pray this prayer and believe it to be so. And we say together, amen, amen, and amen. It was on a Friday that a student walked into my office at McCormick Theological Seminary. I had actually packed up to leave, so when I heard the knock, I thought, oh gosh, it's Friday. <laughs> I hope it don't take long. And she walked in actually bearing gifts. And she shoved what looked like a cassette tape towards me. And she opened it. And it was magnets that she had received from the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. A few of the magnets had images of Dr. Martin Luther King, and others had quotes of Dr. Martin Luther King. And so as I reached towards one of the images, I quickly scanned the quotes, and my hand shifted. And I grabbed it. And it was this little magnet here. And it simply says, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Hmm. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Immediately I thought to myself, one day that's going to preach. And so I think this is the day, and I hope it preaches. And so immediately after reading that, I went to Google. You know, that's what we do when we're looking for more information about something. And I didn't find a whole lot except that it was spoken in 1968 in Washington, D.C., and it also appears in the book In My Own Words, which is a collection of his sermons and speeches collected by his widow, Coretta Scott King. I must admit, I sat twirling the magnet in my hand, repeating it to myself. And then it hit me. This was my advent hope. And this is my epiphany hope. With all that is happening in our country, with all that's happening in our world, the resurgence of blackface, anti-Muslim and anti-immigrant rhetoric. I needed to be reminded of infinite hope. You see, during Advent, we eagerly anticipated the birth of Christ's child. And now the child has been born. And so now we want the manifestation of the supernatural divine power of Christ to land on each of us so that our hearts, our lives, and our minds might be made new. We seek this divine manifestation and revelation just as the Magi did, the ones who bowed down there at the cradle of Jesus, and that's the nice way of putting the manger where he was being filmed. They bowed there knowing that something miraculous was going to happen. Something would be revealed to them. And that's what we want now. We want something to be revealed. We want something to shift. We want something to change. We want to be made new. And just like the Magi, we're seeking this with great hope in the midst of death, in the midst of destruction, in the midst of marginalization, in the midst of war, in the midst of xenophobic rhetoric, in the midst of fear, and it's overwhelming. I know I find myself shaking my head at the events of the day or even turning off the news, deactivating my social media accounts or just giving over to hopelessness. Yet, we still show up to church on Sunday morning. Why? Because we're expecting something greater to be at work and reminding us that we are a people of hope and help. 
of God, but Habakkuk did it anyway. Habakkuk said, how long, O oh Lord, shall I cry to you for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you fires and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? These are tough questions. Especially when you know the answer may not come right away. Or that you still have hard work to do. Yet Habakkuk kept asking. And I keep asking. We need to keep holding on to the infinite hope. And that's the Christian hope. To hold on in the midst of looming government shutdowns. To hold on in the midst of waiting to hear if you will have health care coverage. In the midst of death and destruction. In the midst of increasing hate crimes. Of, which, uh, I'm sorry. In the midst of death and destruction. In the midst of increasing hate crimes against LGBTQIA plus community and people of color. In the midst of fleeing your home because it is no longer safe. In the midst of wondering what later today will bring. In the midst of life happening. Hold. Now, it's possible that not everybody's conditions of life are such that the threat of death daily, fleeing your home country, and wondering about your next meal or your next day, maybe that's not a concern for everybody in the room. But please know, that does not let you off the hook of your responsibility to care for one Another. God didn't have an asterisk with small writing at the bottom of the scripture that says, love your neighbor. Care for your neighbor that said, only if you are in the same situation. <laughs> For us. 
the community and your neighbor in your own language. What we have to say to God may not be pretty, but God can handle you. Tell God the challenges you face personally and the challenges we face as a community that seem insurmountable. Engage God honestly. Ask God your questions and then ask God, what am I to do in response? You see, I have back after asking his questions, says, okay, well, I'm going to head to my lunch post. So he doesn't disengage from the work. He keeps asking the questions and doing the work. Where's your watch post? Where should you be headed? Are you there yet? Do you need to recommit and get there? Ask your questions. You see, God did not shy away from Habakkuk. Habakkuk did not shy away from his responsibility, and he kept on asking while he was walking. We cannot afford to disengage from God. We cannot afford to disengage from our responsibilities. We cannot afford to take a stance that it's none of our business. Too many folks have disengaged from God, but we are the church. Amen. We are the church. Amen. We are Christians. Disengagement from God is not an option, even when it's hard. Even when we're hurting, even when we're down, disengagement from God is not an option. There's a reason we gathered in this place today. Besides that this is just what good Christians do. Dare I say, you just like I am expecting something, anticipating something, hoping and praying with all our might for something, that tangible hope, that tangible peace will break through what feels like ironclad darkness and hopelessness. Our faith and our presence here today is not just for us. It's for those around us as well. So as you ask the tough questions of God, whatever they might be, head to your watch post. Is your call to immigrant rights? Head to your watch post. Is your call to mass incarceration? Head to your watch post. Is your call lobbying for common sense gun laws? Head to your watch post. Is your call to be an educator, community gardener, law enforcement, pastor, community organizer? Head to your watch post. Are you to remind people that it is not taboo to fetch that which is at risk? Head to your watch post. Disengagement from God is not an option. Disengagement from your call is not an option. Disengaging from your purpose, from your hope, from your dream, from your truth, and your work is not an option. So whatever in this moment is tugging at your soul, I implore you to hear me when I say disengagement is not an option. Answer that which is tugging at you. Say to yourself whether it's a whisper whether it's just a thought, or whether you can say it out loud, disengagement is not an option. Say it to your neighbor. Disengagement is not an option. Post it. Plaster it. Remember it. And as it profoundly struck me, I pray that it strikes you. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And as Christians, we are a people of hope. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen.